Hey folks, it's me. Happy New Year. Uh, <clears throat> hope you all had a nice holiday. Uh, saw lots of great folks making lists of stuff, and I'm just terrible at making lists. And so I didn't really participate in that. And the vinyl tags going around, and I, you know, I ain't got time for that shit. No, I'm just kidding. I I, I enjoy that watching you guys do that stuff, but sadly I'll not be participating another year 2019 I hope you're all doing well um, I personally did not get any um, music for Christmas although my wife did give me this a uh, Korg little bits synth kit which I, I don't know if you know about these little bits they're little they're like electronic Legos that snap together by magnets and um, they worked with Korg to come up with this synthesizer but there's all kinds of bits and you can do all kinds of crazy things with them and I think I'm gonna go down that rabbit hole uh, they're a little pricey but they're neat they're really cool um, yeah so if you're interested in synthesizers and you have kids who are interested in I mean very cool thank you Liz for giving me such a great toy I, I mean truly a great toy uh, I like toys um, so anyway Happy New Year. Cheers. Hope it's a good one. So in the background we're listening to this Jay Dilla Instrumentals me Mega Mix, like five hour long Mega Mix that you can find on YouTube. and You can actually download it off of Internet Archive. So I'm going to assume that I can use this in the background of my video because it's really great. Um, I think I mentioned I was Sorry, getting into kind of a hip hop thing, and I uh, don't know if I showed this, but I, I found Jay Dilla's last album recently on CD, and I think it's I think it's the original one. I feel like I showed this maybe, but this is so good. You know, I'm on his deathbed, and he's making this beautiful music. All right, I'm gonna show a couple more CDs. I found this today. Um, Sun Ra singles, a definitive three CD set on Strut. I think there's like a four. LP thing of this, I guess. Um, many, many singles turned up after the Evidence 2 CD set came out in the 90s. Uh, this sounds so much better than that Evidence CD and is obviously comprehensive. And um, I have more to say about Sun Ra, but and not at this right this second. But I was really psyched to find this because I'm. Although I kind of burned out on him, I, I'm, I'm getting more interested in his vast, vast catalog. And there's been lots and lots of reissues that I, I've been resolutely ignoring. But um, this is excellent. Uh, I'm sure the vinyl is, is fantastic, but this is, for 10 bucks, you know, I'm certainly not going to complain. You know, nice, you know, nice pack. Gene's got a nice big note, notebook, notebook, liner notebook book of liner notes um yeah excellent and um okay a couple more this is really nice okay this came out in the fall and uh, i wasn't really aware of it and i saw it and for a really great price and picked it up and apparently it's tied into an exhibit from the stax museum uh, last fall called uh, stack 68 a memphis story this is obviously on stacks um, in this beautiful seven inch book hardbound book thing with uh, a wonderful text in it and so the theme is obviously so the year of 1968 was quite a quite a year and especially in Memphis and so this has every single a and B side that they release from January 1st 1968 to the end of December you know, I got something like a hundred freaking singles, over a hundred singles. And um, it's fascinating. And, you know, I got to say, the mastering is excellent. And, of course, the, the, you know, the text and everything, it's fantastic. Um, great music. And what's interesting is hearing all those singles is that it wasn't just soul music. It was, you know, some hard blues and some psychedelic rock that was maybe not so great uh, some straight-up pop you know they kind of did it all 
Um, if you ever get to Memphis, I highly, highly recommend going to Stax Museum because it's they recreated the whole thing. And, uh, and speaking of which, I also found this for a great price, the Stax Story. Uh, that's four CD. You know, exactly what it says on the tin. Um, one disc of their hits, another disc of like kind of B-sides, a third disc of, uh, how, how does it go? Anyway, and then a live disc. Straight up great, straight up great. Um, and you know, you would think living here in Nashville, just up the road from Memphis, that Stax Bolt stuff would be plentiful. And in some respects it kind of is, but always, always beat to shit. And if it's not, it's, you know, it's expensive, you know, because that's, that's the way markets work, right? So anyway, that's it for CDs, okay? Hi, have you tuned me out yet? Uh, only six minutes, only six minutes, all right. I, I don't have much vinyl to show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I haven't really been digging much. But it's been the holidays and stuff. Cheers, everybody. You know, one of my favorite stores moved to East Bumfuck, and I just, I don't, don't want to drive two hours to go buy records. Um, so, so the store of mine in the town seems to be getting the benefit because they're getting better quality used stuff in them bins and so and like new newy newish stuff like uh, for instance this atriarch's third album i believe dead as truth from 2017 relapse now i have their first two records which i also bought gently used at this place a couple years ago um their first album i liked a lot second album i was like what this this kind of pulls it all together like the sort of gothic elements that they wanted to get going in the second album is better meshed into the, you know, doomy metal thing of the first album. And uh, I, I quite like this. Um, you know, I've got a taste for extreme metal, what can I say? And, um, you know, I'm not going to put this on the first tier of extreme metal, but it's, it's good. Yeah, it's, you know, they sound committed to this sort of yeah, like sort of like Bauhaus meets, I don't know, Sun O or something. No, that's not quite all right. Um, anyway, maybe you like it, maybe you won't. Uh, and I also found this, which a band, I really like their first record a lot. Um, uh, yeah, Ecstatic Vision, a Philadelphia band. Yeah, the first album was like this yeah, mishmash, kraut rock, sidelong jam thing. I really liked it a lot. And then when this came out, I was like, God, this cover is so horrible. I just cannot cannot I can't support it I can't give them top you know full price for this monstrosity this like I mean raw rock fury and so it says this album is a raucous mix of troglodyte Detroit rock soothing Krautian moto filthy beef Hardian blues and Hawk Windian Primal World Heavy Psych. Okay, that's about right. You know, musically, I like this, you know. It's kind of dumb. It's kind of derivative. But, you know, it's derivative of stuff I like, you know. And I was happy to pay, you know, half of what they wanted for it brand new, which, uh, this cover, I mean. And then you, oh, God. Okay. This was on the wall, and, uh, show it living stereo okay now you know the RCA living stereo cover you know if you're into classical records like the shaded dog is like mythical but you know living stereo did a whole bunch of stuff including like you know Les Baxter and um, but here's this record by Ahmed Abdul Malik and I was like I had no idea he made a record on RCA East meets West there he is with his bass in the foreground and the oud in the background. Sure enough, he plays the oud on this. And he's got this killer band, including uh, Lee Morgan on trumpet. And Lee Morgan kills on this. He absolutely kills. I am not the biggest trumpet fan in the world. Uh, I just, that, da, 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 da. the blasting of a trumpet is just not my favorite sound. But Lee Morgan it just sounds so good. 
It, it just has this round, you know, musical sound, you know? Anyway, this is a beautiful record. Um, so, this guy, uh, let's see. Jerome Richardson, Benny Golson, Johnny Griffin, Curtis Fuller, Al Harewood, and uh, Lee Morgan. Yeah, Lee Mor Morgan kills on this. And so, and there's some Egyptian musicians, I guess, also. And he plays oud and I think composed all the all the music. Um, when is this from? I think it's from uh, 1960. 1960. This is an old record. Um, Cleaned up great, sounds beautiful. You know, it was recorded at Webster Hall. Um, a really nice fusion of Eastern music and Western jazz. And yeah, yeah this is killer. This is, I was shocked really at how good it is. And um, sound quality's great. And once again, if you're a fan of Lee Morgan, you gotta hear this. Great stuff, great, great. And then this was, filed in the new age bin you know and I guess it looks like a new age record but it's not it, it's not a new age record Beaver and Krause in a wild sanctuary on Warner Brothers from 1970 it was still in shrink wrap and I thought for sure it was a reissue and I didn't even like look at the vinyl in the store I brought it home and it was the original green label Warner Brothers um, Beaver and Krause okay so these guys guys um, ultimately they were the West Coast representatives for Moog's modular synthesizer in the 70s in the early 70s and um, I think Krauss died kind of early on in their career and they made this record and it made one record before this and maybe another record after this and then Krauss died and um, so this is an electronic music record with um, uh, Dave Grusin on hand organ and piano in a, in a pretty cheese fashion, and uh, Milt Holland on tablas and drums, and Quicos tambourines, congas, Bud Shank, all kinds of flutes, and Howard Roberts on guitar. So kind of an LA studio thing with lots of Moog synthesizer. Really interesting, quirky record. Uh, not new age. Um, quirky electronics, including like kind of a take on also Sprock Zero Through Stro, even though it's not credited that way, but you know, making the synthesizer sound like classical music, which I'm not so interested in, but for instance, there's a track where um, it takes like multiple oscillators spread over a huge distance, you know, dissonant sort of cluster, and then that kind of goes and they all rise together to make this glorious D major chord. And it's the kind of sound that you hear all the time now in like logo spots and stuff. This like rising synthesizer that comes into a chord, you know. Um, so this was kind of the first time that was ever done because they had the equipment to do it. And so it's a record like that, you know, and it's a beautiful, beautiful copy and it was misfiled. It's New Age and so I got it for like nothing, like five bucks. It's like stupid like that. So it goes. They also <laughs> have this. I should I even say this? I'm giving away all my secrets. I, you know, I don't care. I, I really hate the idea of, re, you know, record collecting as competitive sport. You know, although I told a friend of mine, right? Oh well, friend, fellow record collector, about this spot in the store and said, oh yeah, I find weird things in here sometimes, and he's like, oh took notes <laughs> and it hasn't been the same since although you know if I get there at the right time so anyway it's it, 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 they call it exotica and so it's like full of like spoken word stuff and uh, you know George Wallace speeches and Ronald Reagan speeches and uh, you know cheesy sound effects and uh, although some of those are can be really fun and like train recordings and uh, just all kind of less Baxter you know not even so much of that stuff that gets kind of collected but uh, Ravi Shankar gets stuck in there for some reason uh, and anyway and so stuff like this <laughs> freaking John Cage record beautiful still in shrink wrap copy of uh, John Cage harpsichord Ben Johnson's string quartet number two on none such from not sure when this is from but you know it's original minty minty mint 
just sounds freaking great. And, um, you know, one of the wilder John Cage pieces, you know, four harpsichords, you know, sewing machining away, and like computer sounds, you know, it's great. It's really great. Um, but, is it Exotica? Is that really? No. See, now everyone's gonna come to Nashville and they're gonna go and they're gonna, whatever. I don't care. See, uh, well, now I'm gonna save that for last. One more record I found in there. Cheers, everybody. Record collecting is competition. Yeah, you win. If it's, if it's not fun, it's not worth it to me. You know, and the actual listening to the records is tertiary in some respects. I'll be honest. All right. So now here's a really, really strange record. I saw it and it wasn't cheap and it wasn't really expensive either, but it was, well, okay, look at, look at that cover. That is trippy as hell. Now, I don't know how many of you folks up there have ever smoked DMT, but certainly I haven't. But from what I've heard, this is the kind of thing you might see out of your peripheral vision when in that like 30 second to one minute period where you're high as fuck. Um, I mean, what the hell? Look at this. Any Jim Woodring fans out there like that? You recognize those, that shape? All right. Okay, so what the hell is this, right? That's what I thought. What the hell is this? Neuronium is the name of the band. The name of the album is Heritage. Now, there's a Heritage. Um, and so, well, who is Neuronium? Neuronium is this guy, um, Mike, Michelle Huyen. Huyen? I'm not saying his name right. This guy. And as you can see, he plays all keyboards and electronics, and Santi Pico plays all guitars. It's recorded in Barcelona, Spain, in June 1984. It came out on Jive Electro. <laughs> That's when I'm like, what? Okay, I'm bringing this home. I don't care what it is. I'm bringing it home. I really don't know how to describe it. I've listened to it a couple times. 1984, right? Okay, so some of it has sort of that electronic space music thing. And then there'll be, it's on Jive Electro, so then there'll be like these sort of Euro disco beats with like bordering on really cheesy sort of soaring melodies like bordering on that kind of symphonic sort of synthy pop that I really don't care for but it never quite crosses that line and then it'll do something else two side long pieces you know he says heritage from Neuronium the seventh Neuronium album of psychotronic music <laughs> that was another key. It's like, oh, it's psychotronic music. Okay. And that cover doesn't quite live up to the cover. It doesn't. But a very interesting and quirky, weird electronic music record from the 80s. And if that, if those 80s synthesizer sounds appeal to you, then I, that might be an extra, an extra, you know, selling point for you. 18 minutes. One more record. I haven't even opened this yet, but, and I really should because it's really kind of nasty. Get this nasty shrink wrap off of here. Um, I got this for, for sampling purposes. I've, I now have a number of various ways to sample records and stuff, and so I'm a record, record player right here. Um, and so I ultimately want to sample some of this stuff, but it's also a kind of a cool record in its own right. It's um, Journey to the Moon, recorded live on Earth, in space, and on the moon on Buddha Records from 1970. Uh, so it's, you know, about the Apollo 11 flight and includes, you know, lots of the interstellar, interstellar communications from Earth to the space capsule and the moon and stuff. And, you know, Neil Armstrong's famous words and all that kind of stuff think would be excellent fodder material but there's also apparently music on here by um, Sound of Genesis <laughs> and I'm really kind of interested to hear about um, yeah this is a real period piece from I remember watching the moon landing 
my godparents' house, Houston. You know, Houston, you know, that's where Command Central was, or whatever it was called. And, um, you know, there was a lot of pride about what was happening. And, you know, they had a nicer television set, although it was still... You youngsters can't even imagine what it was like back then. But yeah, you know, nowadays, especially on here on YouTube, there's a lot of people, and I've met some of these people, that don't believe we went to the moon. And that shit just pisses me off. Because, you know, just because we can't get our shit together now and do amazing things, and we have to be petty bullshit, you know, can't do anything, can't fix our freaking bridge as much, let's go to the moon. You know, although we sent the rover to Mars, I mean, we, we do, we still do amazing things, but yeah, yeah, we did, and um, too bad we can't do such amazing things, you know, or we don't appreciate the amazing things that we do, like, you know, we, I guess we take it for granted that, that, you know, I don't know, don't get me started, <laughs> all right, thanks for hanging out with me, people. So I was kind of a mixed bag, including CDs, and I, you know, whatever. Hopefully it's not just about the fetish objects, right? All right. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.